Hello and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host Kristen and today we are working on a loom knit towel topper and we're going to be working with a 3 8 loom, a 3 8 inch small gauge loom and we'll be working with a standard towel, kitchen towel. This is more of a finger towel. It's 11 inches wide but you can go anywhere up to uh, 15 inches wide and um, we had this towel topper here with this fun seed stitch uh, that can be done on the needles but we also will have a blog showing how to do this on the loom but we're also going to do a topper so today we're doing just the topper part and I'm going to help you get this look and use one of your existing kitchen towels today I'm actually going to work with a towel that I have had for a long time this is actually my grandmother's towel and um, it's a it's a smaller one this is about 11 inches by 16 inches and then I'm going to be cutting off the top part here and I'm going to go ahead and start by cutting off this tag here so I don't need that because it's going to be kind of more displayed and hanging up in my kitchen for the holidays, but you can use this for any time of the year. So this is a smaller towel, and what you're going to want to do is take your loom that you want to use, do a 3 8 loom, and hold the towel up and just kind of go across here and see what the width is. And as long as your loom is going to match this width, it's fine because you aren't going to be able to stretch your towel like you would your knitting. So your knitting can normally kind of stretch out, but your towel won't. So you'll be able to tell how many stitches wide it's going to work for you. The key things, the key ingredients that you need are a 3 8 inch loom. You're going to need a um, rotary cutter. And then we also have a different blade too. So you want this straight blade here so that you can cut across the top. And you're gonna want a skip cut rotary blade here. This is a, um, a skip cut where it skips the cuts. All right, so it's got this nice edge on it and then you just switch it out with this straight edge here. Okay, so it skips in wide spaced cuts. And then these, the, um, the amount between these skips is about 3 8 and so that should work out just fine for our towel to go across here. So uh, if you want to know about how many uh, stitches that you are going to have, um, you're going to roughly, uh, you're going to take 0.375, which is 3 8 which is this spacing in between here, and take, so take one inch divided by 0.375, which gets you about 2.67 and then you can multiply that out times times the inches width okay and so I get about 29 so I should have about 29 pegs on here uh, or stitches but a 15 inch towel could get you 40 or you know wider so anyway where we're gonna be making this this is a live tutorial so I'm not gonna be answering questions live but I'm gonna be covering everything you need and the replay will be available on Facebook as well as on YouTube I also need a um, tape measure a cutting board cutting mat that goes underneath here I need a straight edge ruler which is this right here and they're gonna need some cotton yarn I'm using holiday yarn because I'm using a holiday towel but all you need is your towel and your yarn excuse me your yarn and then we've got our straight edge cutter and I've got some scissors over here you'll also need a tapestry needle and then a um, a darning needle or sewing needle for sewing on your button and of course your button all right so I'm going to show you everything you need except for throwing on a showing on a button and weaving your ends so you can do that on your own all right let's start by cutting I'm going to move all my supplies aside so hold a moment <coughs> excuse me All right, I'm going to start by cutting off the uh, end that I want to use. So this is going to hang like this. So I've got my decorative towel, and then we're going to cut off the top end. All right, I'm going to line this up with this straight edge here. I've got rulers on my mat. And I'm going to go down just a little bit. <clears throat> and I don't need to measure right now. What I need to do is cut a straight line. So let me Okay. 
So we're going to be using, whoops, so uh, there you go. We're going to use, be using the Skip Cut Rotary Cutter. And uh, you want to use enough pressure to do the perforations on it, but you're, uh, you don't want to use too much force to where it messes it up. And on this first pass here, I'm not doing a very good job. <laughs> but this is just a straight edge cut. If the rotary cutter, if you don't like how it does the skip cut on you, then you can always cut another straight edge and do it. So we're going to measure down a half an inch. So the half inch is this little dot up top here and a little dot down here, which you can't see. So let me just move this. Hold on. <clears throat> Reposition. This is live. <laughs> All right. Well, what you can't see is at the top and at the bottom, I have dots that line up. So I'm just going to get a straight cut here. And I'm going to go ahead and switch my blade now that I have it ready. This line that you're seeing here is a light above. I know it may look a little weird. Okay. So skip cut, rotary cutter blade, wide spaced. Forget how hard I need mine to go. So hold on. Pardon me while I test it. Okay. All right. I measured away about half an inch. should have caused those perforations and I'm gonna have to push a little bit harder so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go down and cut it again sorry this is my uh, this is a live thing <laughs> this is the first time I've done it for the uh, this this towel here Measure down half an inch. It's really different having the camera right in front of your face doing this. All right. Half an inch measured down. And I'm going to start it where my, um, my blade starts right before I start cutting. That's where I didn't pay attention to before. So that I get a nice spacing. So this blade is going to um, stop, start on the table. And then the next blade is going to um, be jumping across that spacing before I start. So I should have done that before. I'll start at the top. I was going to do it at the bottom. But... Let me put this on here. All right, I'm gonna do it in a hard setting.
I'm going to have to pull a little harder. And then I'm going to take my towel and hang it on the perforations, which I hope are going to show. They're kind of small, but you can see how they're they're perforated here, and so they're just going to have to go straight down on top of your um, on your uh, loom here. And I've I've put out where I think is 29 holes to start. And there, that's the first one. Two, three, four, and so on. I'm just going to keep doing this. So I had to put my rotary on the hard cut. I don't use them that often. So I wasn't sure the first time I did it on too soft of a cut. They're really small holes, but they're going to fit on these pegs nicely. trying to hold it closer to my face and it's just going to be easier on the table I think Let's see if I can zoom in for you This is live and unedited. <laughs> All right. All right, so I have my towel on here. Let's zoom out again here. All right, oops. Sorry about that. Hold on, let me get the color set so it won't do that. Okay, so my towel is on here. I've got the, the pretty side down, hanging down, just like this. And I've got 29 stitches. And I know this because I actually estimated it to begin with. And I started, a, I put a stitch marker on here and here. You don't have to do that. But um, if you want to do a guess and see if your guess is right, then, <laughs> then that'll work. Now, so for your towel, whatever that number is, um, you can go ahead and write that down, uh, whatnot. You could even go ahead and mark. But we want to get to the, we're going to be working our way down to the middle 12 to, to uh, 13 stitches here. Uh, so you could, you could do that. I'm not going to sit here and do that right now. But um, we're going to, later on in the pattern, uh, you'll see that. So I'm going to refer to the pattern off to the side, which will be on the website later. I'm going to go ahead and move a couple of things here. I need to get them out of my way so I'm not knocking them during this tutorial. Like my blade. <laughs> okay. All right, so I've got my uh, cotton yarn. I'm just putting that off to the side and my loom hook. And this is a 3 8 loom. Uh, you can use any brand uh, that gets you that. And this is because of the wide space cuts. So we're gonna be working on uh, 
starting and then working two inches and then we're going to work our way inward and upward so um, the next little bit is just going to be me working across to get to two inches and then i'm going to do um, the the main part where we start making our decreases all right so you're going to make a slip knot and we're going to set it on the left peg here and let me get my pattern up here and make sure I'm okay so the far left here and then we're just going to e-wrap now in the pattern it'll say uh, knit um, I'm just using that as a standard. Um, we're going to be e-wrapping. You can uh, knit, but I'm going to e-wrap just to make it a little bit more, um, make it easy and kind of standard. And um, also it'll give a little bit of a stretch. So just e-wrap across. If you like what you're seeing, just comment below. grab your towel and measure the width on yours you can start estimating and uh, even put in the comments um, <clears throat> you're going to take one inch divided by 0.375 uh, inches which gives you um, how many stitches per inch or pegs per inch you're going to need and then uh, multiply that out times your width and that should give you a rough estimate of how many pegs it is so I've e wrapped down to the end and I lifted the bottom part over the top the bottom part right now is the fabric and I'm just gonna go and lift the fabric up and over right now If I can zoom in here, hold on. Okay. So sorry, I'm battling sinuses here. The half inch that I measured could also be cut to three eighths. Um, it's a little generous for here, but um, I wasn't quite sure uh, if I could measure it accurately with three eighths. Um, it'll also be good. So if you have some fraying that's occurring um, and then you could put on some of that um, uh, no fray um, glue stuff <laughs> when you're done or uh, stitch it up with a thread and needle afterwards. Right now it's fraying a little bit, but that's okay because I have extra slack, but I would rather take care of that afterward and um, stitch it up. This loom is the knitting board loom. Uh, that is the new premium loom set. I believe this loom has 72 pegs. I'm only using 29. The, the pegs are, uh, the, the slits are very small when you first cut it. So it may not look like it actually cut your fabric, so you're going to need to look at it close. I have bifocals on, so it was really hard to see the first time I cut it. The small gauge boy looms, um, Cindy Wood, Martha Stewart, um, Kiss looms, knitting board, other loom manufacturer will work.
<clears throat> okay, now that we've got this, that established, um, you can also take some extra um, stitch markers, hold on, and mark the first and last five uh, pegs. So I'm going to take this stitch marker and I'm going to mark um, one, two, three, four, five, pick it up, put a stitch marker on. Oh, that was erupt. Okay, and then go down here. One, two, three, four, five. Pick it up. Put a stitch marker on. And we're going to do a border of garter. Put my stitch markers away. All right, so row two is purl five. So we're purling up to and on that placed marker. And we're going to e-wrap all the way till before the marker. And then we're going to purl the last five stitches. And then we're going to e-wrap the next row. If um, you're watching this live and there's comments flying by, uh, you can swipe to the right and the comments will disappear. Okay, I'm just knitting over that previous row and go ahead and finish e-wrapping. Sorry, I have something off to the side that was catching on my yarn. All right. So your um, even row, uh, I'm sorry, your odd row is all knit stitches. In this case, we're doing E-wraps. You're going to do this for two inches.
and then purl the first five stitches and the last five stitches with E wraps in the middle on the alternate rows. So that's it on that portion. And then you'll just pause your video and come back. And of course I'm doing this live, so if I edit it later, you wouldn't see this portion. This is <laughs> this is the nature of making these uh, videos. You don't see all the in-between. So right now you're just going to see the in-between while I do this live. Sorry. <laughs> Feel free to talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> I'm not reading the comments, so. And you can do your own stitch work in between if you want to do something else. If you want to do a seed stitch in between, you're going to need an odd number of stitches. We're just keeping this uh, E-wraps to make it simple with a garter edge. That way the garter edge keeps it from um, <clears throat> keeps it from rolling. It gives it a nice boundary. If you were left-handed, you could start with your slip knot on the right and do uh, the opposite uh, directionally. If you are joining me live, um, well, on the, you know, if you're joining me live um, and you missed the beginning, we use a skip cup rotary um, after we cut off the top edge with a straight edge and straight ruler. And then you go half an inch down and use a skip cut rotary blade. It spaces it about three eighths inch apart. And you can use any width of towel that you want. Just put it up to the loom that you want to use, which is a three eighths inch loom. And uh, see if you have enough pegs to cover that. You don't have to worry about stretching the towel out because it won't. If it's a knit towel, or better yet, if you want to reuse uh, an old dishcloth and make it into a towel, you could totally do that. You can just hang it on your loom just simply by um, grabbing on to the edge stitches and popping them on the loom. So if you uh, made too many uh, samples, <laughs> some cotton samples or something, made made a dishcloth too long, whatever, um, be a great opportunity to use it for a hanging towel. We'll also have a pattern up to create one from scratch in a seed stitch. It's going to look like this. So we're going to be doing something similar on this one. And I'm going to be working for about two inches to get it straight, a straight away. And then we'll start um, decreasing. I am not going to change colors on this towel here. <clears throat> In fact, before I finish knitting these over, I'm going to go ahead and make my purl stitches here. And I've got a question asking if I have any other videos on the new round looms. I think I have something, but um, and I'm sure I'll have some coming up. I've got one planned coming up but um, that's not going to be for another month or so. <clears throat> the round looms, if you're using it in the round and connecting in the round and it's specific to that number, um, then if you're looking for something really, really specific, then no. Um, but you can use any of the techniques used on this loom that's worked in a flat panel back and forth on other looms. 
it's not unique to that loom. That's saying like one pair of needles is the only one to be used on a pattern ever. And I wouldn't want to suggest that, so. It's more of the gauge. Okay, I've already purled the first five stitches and now we're gonna e-wrap. If you are watching live and someone joins up, you're welcome to answer the question if they're asking. I can't answer all of them. Oops, I need to purl this. So then we get to the last five stitches we're gonna purl. This is the Knitting Board Premium Loom. You just need a 3 8 loom. So the pegs are spaced center peg to center, center of one peg to the center of the next peg. You can measure it at 3 8 of an inch. It's also called a small gauge loom. Now, I can go ahead and um, make this one only one inch and knit to the, instead of knitting to the two inches like I'm telling you to do, and show you what it is like with one inch. Um, but I kind of want to make it to two. <laughs> you guys can vote if you'd rather me just only do one inch. Probably on my towel because it's so much smaller, I probably only need one inch. But I just don't know that anybody watching live is going to want to watch this whole thing. And because I'm purling uh, to the left, uh, by the way, you're wrapping all stitches, beginning uh, first and last peg, starting and stopping, all that. Um, I am knitting to the right and purling to the left. Now the middle stitches are not purled, but when you're right-handed, it's easier to purl going towards the left. And so that's why I started where I started. If it's easier for you purl, uh, to purl going right, then you could flip um, your starting point the way I did it. We're going to be making decreases and I'll talk about uh, direction on that as well. Slip, slip, knit and knit two together and their positioning and it's written the way it's written for um, working in the direction that I'm working. So knit two together is going to be on the right and slip slip knit is going to be, I'm, I'm sorry, knit two together is going to be on the left, slip slip knit is going to be on the right. If you don't know how to purl bind off, I'm going to be doing that or bind off purl wise. I'll be demonstrating that on this project as well. Gayla says, I'm content to watch two inches. Hmm. Y'all are getting me slow. I had sprained my thumb last month and I'm still a little tender when I'm trying to go fast, so I'm just gonna go the speed I'm going. <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not a speed loom knitter. 
that's for sure. Now, if you had me on a kiss loom, to go real fast and I wouldn't be e-wrapping. All right, this is how far I've gotten. Okay, let's see, let's see where I am by my tape here. No, Libby, it can't be three uh, five eighths unless you can get a um, a cutter that's um, wider than wide space. The um, you're not going to be able to stretch your uh, perforated uh, openings to get it to five eighths. It's just it's too wide. It's it's just too wide because um, then you're you're trying to you're trying to make it stretch a quarter of an inch. <clears throat> so this is how far I've come. It's one inch right now. Or maybe a little over. I normally wouldn't measure that way, but it's because it's got this little folded area over. So we can go like this and measure. So it's about one inch. And I've done, we're doing one, two, three, four, five, six, about six rows. Some of the questions are going too fast, so I can't read them. Do I think the double loom hook would work better? Oh my gosh, thank you. Yes, let's try that. It wasn't in front of me, and so I didn't grab it, but I will grab it and test it. Sound good? I did that one really tight last time. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is, <laughs> let's just say this is cotton anyway. By the way, I said cotton in the beginning. You can use acrylic. You don't have to use cotton. I'm using cotton for this. Um, just because it's a cotton towel and, um, I mean, it absorbs and it'll dry out nicely. I just happen to be using cotton, so you could use a worsted weight. People have been using towel toppers and worsted weight for years. <laughs> All right, let me, um, I'm going to e-wrap this row. Actually, I'll go ahead and do this and, e and then I'll e-wrap it and then I'll try the double loom hook on here. You're welcome, Libby. If, am I too close? Like my hand's just way in the way? Are we okay? Not too close, perfect. Okay, wonderful. Okay, I'm gonna lock this stitch in and let me get my double loom hook. Hold on. <sighs> Messy craft room morning. <laughs> Where's my <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's supposed to be in this spot and it's not. And I have all this stuff around it. Hold on. Are you kidding me, Kristen? I have this one, which is not the hook I want. So hold on. Oh. Stop. Okay, I'm taking a coffee break. Hold on.
Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm a bad manager of my craft supplies. I'm... Oh. Wow. My arm is fatigued looking at that thing. Okay. Never mind. I'm not going to try it. I was going to try the double loom hook. There's one that um, is skinnier than this. And, um, man, where is it? <laughs> I it, I bet it's packed up with another project. So, uh, okay, hold on. Let me get a break. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Oh my gosh, I got so excited about using that hook. I'm like looking around behind me while I do this. I'm like, do I see it here? I'm really excited about t using my mamaw's towel. My grandmother, we call Mama, and she's not with us anymore. And I inherited these towels and I yeah, I'm excited about using it. Okay. Yeah, feel free to laugh. I'm I'm a dork. <laughs> Y'all laughing at my silly. I gave my kids a movie to watch. I'm like, go watch. I think they're watching Santa Claus 3 or something. I'm like, I'm going to do a loom along. They'll be quiet. <laughs> oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the looming so delightful. And since we got yarn coming out of our ears, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Amazon doesn't show signs of stopping. <laughs> that doesn't fit. Uh, and I got some stitches for knitting. The lights are turned way up high so I can see my stitches. How to finish that off? It doesn't rhyme. All right, woo, I had an alarm go off. It's a half day for the kids and I picked them up early and that was my alarm to say, go pick up the kids for my normal schedule. They're on holiday break. So this is going to be available on YouTube after this live broadcast here on Facebook. And that is my Friday video. So you won't see another video tonight on YouTube. You'll see this one, which is good because if you want to go out and get supplies, you'd be able to do that. All right.
So let it snow, let it snow, let it snow, Allison says. <laughs> They'll give me some lyrics to sing. Pass my time here while I'm knitting away. Pass my time with my pastime. <laughs> Greeting cards have all been sent. The Christmas rushes through. But I still have one wish to make. A special one for you. Merry Christmas, darling. You know what I just realized? <laughs> this is Christmas time while I'm filming this, but people are going to see this at any time of the year. They're going to be like, why is she singing Christmas carols? Why is she singing Christmas songs? Be like, because Christmas is awesome. Punk? I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. All right. Um, <laughs> thank you, Leanne. You're so sweet. All right. I am getting close to the two inches. Let me check my pattern for, for a second because I believe I'm going to start on this row. Yes. Um, you're going to start on the right um, on a purl row for, no, not on a purl row. Sorry. Um, you're going to start on the left for a, um, on a knit row whenever you are ready to start your decreases. And I think I'm going to start it after this one. So I'm going to uh, knit over all my stitches on this pass here. So I am on my repeat of a row two, which is purl five, knit to the last five stitches, purl five. It's that sprained thumb. I'm having trouble gripping. You can see how it's folded over here. And if you like to sew, this would be a great one for you to um, go back and, um, and sew this under. Um, you could do it with a machine easily. But I don't do that very much. Just saying. Okay. And then you still have this extra piece that's going to have to be um, woven in too. If you sew, then you could just lay this across the back. Even if you hand stitch, you could just lay that across and then stitch that in. Okay. All right, so this is going to be my decrease row. We are on row three. And um, so this is measured at two inches. Looks like this. Okay, so you have a rib stitch border. And then um, you can also pin this back and sew this at an angle, and then that little edge won't look like that. So I'm just going to point that out now. So flip that back, stitch it down, and then this is all um, E-wrap in between. And you could do another stitch in the middle here. I, we're just using E-wrap for this um, tutorial. Okay. So before you begin your decreased rows, before you um, start, I want you to move your decreased stitches inward. Your decreased stitches are, oh, I didn't knit over. Okay, go ahead and knit over um, these stitches here, uh, at least the first two next to the uh, stitch markers. Okay, so your decreased stitches are going to be um, right before the um, uh, the stitch marker here. So I'm going to pick up this decrease stitch and I'm going to move it over here. Okay. 
So if you have to unwrap your stitch uh, to get it over there, then do that. Sorry. I'm trying to look through my phone. Okay, so I'm moving this stitch, stitch over here. This becomes a slip slip knit on this side, and this side, I'm gonna take the one by the stitch marker and move it over to the right, and it's going to become a knit two together. Okay, so before we start, we're moving those stitches inward. A knit two together is a right-leaning stitch, and a slip-slip knit is a left-leaning stitch or decrease. I once heard Marley Bird say that <laughs> knit two together are Republican <laughs> and and slip slip knit or Democrat. Now I don't care what side you're on. That's funny still. Um, so <laughs> anyway, it's just, it's just funny. Um, all right. So I've gone ahead and done that. Now these, this stitch marker is going to move, um, when this one moves. Uh, so if you need help remembering the first and last, uh, five stitches. And so, um, when we start working these, you can move them, uh, inward. So we're, we're knitting, uh, so I'm going to knit uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm knit that over. Oh, shoot a monkey. I know that's something my family says. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to move these stitches over. Okay, so I'm move this stitch, set it down, and move this stitch, work them all down. Okay, and then you can move the other ones as you go uh, on the other side, so you don't have to do this every time uh, on the right and left side, you can just do the left side before you begin. So now I'm ready to e-wrap these two together. This is a knit two together. So you, I'm just I'm just wrapping the stitch and lift the bottom two over the top. And then you're just gonna continue working down until your next decrease. Okay, and then the next decrease is uh, the slip slip knit, and we're just gonna knit both of them over that top loop and lock that in. And I'm gonna go ahead and knit these over while I'm at it. Okay, and now I'm going to knit this stitch here. Pick it up, and now I can move my stitch marker and place it. And now work my last five stitches, and I could just move them over after I'm done. And I don't need this stitch marker on here anymore. That was just for me in the beginning to show you it was 29 stitches that I had counted out. Move my stitches in, inward by one. So that row decreases your stitches by two. Now you're going to work a purl row. The purl row is just as you've been doing this whole time. You're going to be purling five stitches E wrapping in the middle, purling five stitches. That's it. You're going to continue working on that, uh, repeating rows three and four, which is what we just uh, are working on. We're working on row four now, repeating rows uh, three and four uh, for um, uh, seven, seven more times. And 
you'll be working until you decrease to 12 or 13 stitches. Now, for mine, because I have 29 stitches, it's only seven more times. So if by that point you have gotten down to the 12 or 13 stitches, then you're going to jump down to a portion in the pattern uh, that is, um, if you've already achieved that, then you skip down to row seven. If you have not, then you'll skip down to row five, which is a decrease of two every row. Okay, and that way you would have to move your stitches in every time. Now with the E-wrap, because I'm in a, um, I'm in a flat panel, it actually changes the stitch directly directionally because I'm wrapping in this direction. So it actually shifts the stitches over. You would have to take every stitch and flip it over. This is just an E-wrap tip if you're doing a stockinette in a flat panel. And so it actually shifts um, how the uh, stitch lines up. So in order to get a uniform V look, it really would be better to do a traditional knit or a loose U stitch. That's just a little loom trivia on E-wrap stitch and how it behaves. It's like a kid. It has a certain behavior. <laughs> All right. So we're just work knitting. Uh, I'm sorry, purling the last five stitches. Just pause your video and continue on. And that's what I would say if I was <laughs> editing this. But I'm not. <laughs> At least not right now. All right, so um, this one is uh, the end of this row. I'm going to go ahead and knit over all the E-wrap stitches. And then we're going to move the stitches inward. Tell me uh, while we're sitting here watching and knitting and whatever what are your whatever you're doing, uh, tell me what your favorite uh, home decor project is to work on or one that you would like to learn how to work on. Something for the bathroom, something for the kitchen or the living room, whatever strikes your fancy. This cotton is giving me problems. Sorry about that. If you like what you're seeing, be sure and hit the uh, like button or love button and share. By the way, did you know on YouTube you can now share with your friends a video? Like inside the app. It's really cool. There's also a community thing on Good Knit Kisses, and you can tell me what you would like to learn next. Got a little post going on over there. If you're live, of course, you know, you can come back. Oh, look at a jump. You can come back and watch later, of course, or be able to jump back in while it's still live. Or play me in the background, which is kind of fun. <laughs> I'll tell you what's coming up. So if you walk away, it's okay. You'll hear me. I 
go ahead and move this first. Oh, see, and I didn't. Can you guys hear all the planes here? <laughs> I get a lot of planes flying overhead. I'm going to turn it over here in a minute and show you guys um, what it looks like with the decreases. I'm going to finish this next row to let it kind of fall down a little more. Oh, caught my mistake. Purl the last five stitches. I purl the first five. Notice I'm not talking because oh, it's written on a pattern. So you'll have to go over to the blog. Um, if Joanne hasn't put the link in already, we'll have a link for the pattern in the comments and then we'll update the description and put that in whenever it's ready. Uh, no, I don't normally knit on a table <laughs> in between takes. I pick this up and work it on my lap. So I'm kind of in an awkward position. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> I'm having... Uh, thank you for that link. I didn't realize it was ready. I hadn't. I missed it earlier. Sorry. <laughs> Joanne's awesome. She was helping my my brain. <laughs> she's she's my other half of the brain there, the smarter half. I just did what I'm not supposed to do. Sorry. This is a decrease row. I need to move my stitches.
Can you guys hear that plane? I've had so many planes overhead. It's crazy. Haha, <laughs> uh -huh, I get to pretend to be Kristen <laughs> when I post links. Yep. Uh, my hand is just fatigued from this thumb issue and cotton yarn. <laughs> Darn you, cotton, we love and hate you at the same time. <laughs> Darn you, cotton. All right. So we've moved our stitches inward. And after I finish wrapping this row, I'll turn it over and show you what it looks like with the decreases. All right, turn it over and then you can see the decreases starting right here. So we've got our uh, stitches on the edge here and then they start decreasing uh, over here. It's harder to see, but you'll, you'll be able to see it a little bit. But if you look at this uh, knit, knit stitches here, do you see how um, it's, you'll see Kind of a y-shaped stitch move like back and forth is doing this thing they're not all lined up angling a certain way it's because when we wrap in one direction it angles one way and we wrap in the other direction it angles the other way so that's why the uh, e-wrap stitch is not a uniform stitch when it's knit uh, back and forth um, but when it's knit in the round they all go the same direction We're working until we get to um, 12 or 13 stitches across. And the reason why I said 12 or 13 is because that's, you would have, if you start with an odd number, you're going to end with 13. If you started with an even number, you're going to end at 12. So mine started with 29. So I'm going to have 13 in the middle, which means I'm going to have my right five and my left five. And then I'm going to have three in the middle. That's why earlier when I said well, you can mark your pegs, but you don't really have to. It's because if you're already moving in your stitch marker, then you'll be able to count that um, easily. Thank you, Karen. She says, let's see, I'm trying to read this while I do this. Thank you, Kristen. Again, you're the best. You help make all of our ho holidays more special. Merry, Merry Christmas. Thank you so much, Karen. Merry Christmas to you. Do you guys have special plans for your holidays, everyone? Karen, <laughs> have you finished making all your presents? If you're making them. I've had years where I didn't make any presents. Like, I did purchase presents and I didn't get to knit that year because I ran out of time. <laughs> I prefer to make them if I can. But with the kids, I don't obviously make everything that I give them. <laughs> that would be, I don't know. <laughs> can't knit an iPad. <laughs> okay, I've never given them an iPad. <laughs> you know what I mean. We make uh, fudge every year with my grandmother, uh, with my grandmother's recipe, my mom and I do, and my sister, 
and I have the recipe and I have these piece together videos that I've thought long and hard about if I should piece them together and give you the recipe. There are things my mom and I making them with my kids. Would you guys want to want that recipe in a video? It's really good fudge. It's million dollar fudge, which apparently was a recipe that lots of people shared back in the day. So there's a lot of people who have the recipe. Would you guys want uh, videos on loom knit dishcloths and towels? Okay, I'm on a decrease row. I'm going to move my rows inward. Yes, million dollar fudge is the bomb, Kayla says. Yeah, it really is. So good. Peanut brittle. I'm not ready to make peanut brittle. I'll have to like film someone making peanut brittle because you gotta have your hands for that. Oh my, you do. <laughs> Gotta stir, stir, stir. Don't let it scorch or else it's not good. Tina's like, yes, Sherry, yes, please. Tambi says yes. I'm <laughs> looking throughout your notes here. Libby says, I love the recipe. Yes, please. <laughs> awesome. I will see if I can work on that. I've had the um I've had the little video um clips in my phone for a year. And um, but I was gonna have to like voice over everything. It was gonna be like a very, very <laughs> A very, very jacked up home version of like tasty videos, like where you just like show the ingredients one by one, you know, <laughs> you know, those tasty videos, they make everything look easy and quick and like perfect. You should see what I made last night. <laughs> I made these awful looking <laughs> peppermint cookies, peppermint twist sugar cookies. And I sent a picture to Joanne and she was laughing so hard at me. Oh my gosh. It was a Pinterest fail. <laughs> they were awful. Coffee break. Did y'all like the holiday songs while I did this? I can't play any music in the background because the platform would get would get unhappy with me. But I could sing something <laughs> if you want me to. <laughs>
How am I doing, Joanne? Stuff in my way. Hold on. Okay, ready to decrease. Tammy Anderson, who may be on here, I'm not sure, but she used to tell me that she would try and knit and keep up with what I did on YouTube and see if she could knit as fast as I could. Of course, as I said, my hand is very fatigued from being sprained um, <clears> of <throat> my thumb. Uh, but she used to say that she would try and catch up with me. But because this is a... Um, a full live tutorial you're seeing like everything like how fast or slow and uh, you could just play this thing and let it go while you're working and you'd be like Kristen I was so much faster than you <laughs> so you could do that oh my gosh I'm so tired it's like not moving for me oh that's right Joanne, um, I challenged her. I told her to like during the break. She was saying that she hates weaving in ends, and so she was putting it off. And she had like a whole project stacked of them. I was like, "Would well, do it during a broadcast?" I was actually thinking for Monday, but today is even better because I'm just, you know, she's just sitting there doing that. So she's like, "Oh yeah, how many projects did you start with?" Or like, how many projects are you, are you going to try and get done, or do you need to get done? Joanne, you've got five done. She's so sweet. She says, I'm doing a great job as always. Thank you. You're so kind. I like that book, The Help. You is kind, you is smart, and you is important. She needs to finish 10. Oh my goodness. You can totally do this. Totally. You can totally do that during this broadcast. Okay, you guys. Look at it. See it's starting to decrease. You see it coming inward like that? And this nice long hanging towel. Especially for this little small. This is really a finger towel. You know? And remember, you're going to tack down these edges here. And then just kind of angle it and stitch that down. All right, let's keep going. Gayla says, oh my gosh, that's just what I did. I sewed in the ends to a bunch of my headbands. <laughs> LOL, gee, I only have 13 ah, more to make now. Well, good. See? Who needs the radio? <laughs> oh, I'm doing one too many. One too many. This is not to be pearled. Put it back on. Ah! There we go. Way to go, Gala. 
That's awesome. Sorry, delayed reaction. <laughs> like, so. I'm half paying attention here. We're getting there, y'all. We're getting there. Thanks for your patience. Do you like this format? Do you like live loom alongs? I mean, if it's not a terribly long project, I mean, this will all be done in, what, you think an hour? One, less than that. I've been on for an hour and 22 minutes. Ooh, it's taking too long. One, two, three. Okay, so I need, I've got one, two, that's one row decrease. One, two, that's three rows of decrease. One, two, that's another row of decrease. So uh, that many decrease rows to go here. One of them is happening now. Decrease row. Well, we're moving on up, moving on up. To the east side, to a deluxe apartment in the sky. We're moving on up. I'm sorry, I'm moving my pegs, and it makes me think of this song. <laughs> Jefferson's. I used to love watching that show. Ah, uh, I'm so weird. That's a good show. All right. Your Sanford and Son. <laughs> Singing like TV songs here. This is what I do. This is who I am. This is who I am. I am Rosemary's granddaughter, the spitting image of my father. <laughs> hey, Brandy, you just missed my reference to the Jeffersons. I was singing the song. My friend Brandy just jumped on. I'm moving my stitches and I'm like, well, we're moving on up, moving on up to the east side, to a deluxe apartment in the sky. We're moving on up <laughs> to the east side. We finally got a piece of the pie. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I could keep going, <laughs> but I won't. Oh. Michelle says how fortunate we are to share a love of crafting I honestly don't know what I would do during the snow and cold if I couldn't craft oh amen sister yes and and for me I know it's like super hot in Texas but really it gets so hot I mean who wants to be outdoors if it's 110 I mean hello I want to be inside. Give me some crafts. Give me some games. <laughs> Bond says, sing it, girl. <laughs> uh. Y'all give me some other <laughs> song ideas. At least I'm not singing Welcome Back, Cotter. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> oh, my gosh. John Travolta. Showing my age. I'm showing my age. Who cares? I'm a good age. I'm a rocket. I'll be, I'll be 42 soon. My birthday. Everybody celebrates on my birthday. Y'all. 
It's New Year's Eve. Y'all all party on my birthday. You just didn't know it. <laughs> ah. All right. This, <laughs> this cotton yarn with the thread is like, ah, give me fits. Okay. All right. So we got one, two, three. Okay. And then I'm going to have two more sets of decreased rows. So I'm on a decreased row now, so I'll get those done. And then we have one more after that. And then I will be at the 13 stitches that I need. So now I need to move my stitches in. Remember, this is knit two together. For those of y'all just joining us, a knit two together is a right-leaning decrease. And it is Republican, <laughs> according to Marley Bird. <laughs> and then on the other side, we're going to do a slip-slip knit. And it's a left-leaning decrease. And it's Democrat. <sighs> Funny joke. All right. If you missed that silliness earlier. I took a cable class with her. And, um, and that was what she said in the cable class. And I thought that was hysterical. So now I remember it. <laughs> Oh, I'm so fatigued. I'm just not worried about untwisting these stitches here. I'm a youngin, Vaughn. That's all right. I'm a youngin. Age is only a number, baby. You know, and everybody's living longer these days. So really, 40 isn't middle-aged anymore. <laughs> they just keep moving that goalpost further away from me, which is actually okay. <laughs> How do y'all feel about that? <laughs> I was just talking to my husband about that last night <laughs> before we saw Star Wars. Yes, we did. We saw the latest last night. Did y'all watch it? I'm not going to tell you anything. Don't worry. There's no spoilers here. Michelle, you haven't seen it yet. Gayla's feisty and on the move, she says. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Let's see. Let me scroll down here. Whoop, I missed some, a comment. I never remember which is left and right. I have to look at it every time. <laughs> no spoilers, Joanne says. I'm not going to spoil it for you. I don't like when people spoil it for me, so someone nearly spoiled it for me last night. I'm like, shh. We showed up, and there was a lady who had a fundraiser going. They had had a charity event right before, and they got an advanced screening, and then they had these shirts. And anyway, we were chatting with her, and we, were, we decided to help support the charity. And my husband bought a couple of shirts for the kids because they were, you know, the Star Wars shirts. And she said something, and I'm like, stop. I stopped her because she started to, like, let the cat out of the bag about some stuff. And I'm like, are you kidding me? We're about to walk in here. Like, no. Do not spoil this for me. All right. I'm getting there. This is my last. I'm about to be on my last decrease row after this. Okay. So... Uh, when you do, and this is the repeats that you're doing. So you do the seven repeats of those two rows. Okay. And I'm about to be on the seventh part of the repeat for those two rows. Okay. And then, um, if you aren't at 12 or 13 stitches at that point, then, um, what you do is you, um, continue on to the next set of two stitches, uh, two row repeat where you're decreasing by two every row instead of every other row. So now I'm going to move, oops, move these stitches in. All my stitches. Hmm. <laughs> 
And I will always knit you. Ooh, I don't know why I thought of that right now. I think well, I started going all my stitches live in Texas. That didn't rhyme. And then I was like, then I started thinking of another song. That's how my brain works. It works in songs. Someone told me the name of what that is. Like when you sing a song and then you like put different words to it and it totally has a thing. And I don't know the thing. I'm like, <sighs> I will always love you, you, my knitting you, oh, I'll always, i always love you. <laughs> Cause I'll always change all my colors for you. <laughs> I don't have to knit very much further. I don't have to have to go. I'll go with you later. You go on ahead. <laughs> I don't want to hold it back again. This passion inside. I can't loom by myself. Yes, I can. But there's nowhere to hide. <laughs> oh my gosh, y'all. I'm, I'm slap happy. Sorry. Hang on. I gotta get me some, uh, some, uh, something to eat. I have to drink here. Okay. Love that. Shoehorn. That's it, Valerie. Thanks. Okay. So here we go. This is where we're at. All right. Look how lovely this looks. It's got a lovely decrease. Shoo. Okay, Vaughn <laughs> says I'm a riot. I know, y'all don't get this when it's all edited, right? <laughs> okay, so, like that. All right. What? Michelle says, I've never been able to do this again, but I'm watching Picture in Picture with you and Harry Potter. That's hysterical. Um, Harry Potter. All right, sweet. Okay, here we go. So, now I'm at the point where I need to get on the pattern. So, hold on. I'm going to show you. I have this little pattern sitting off to the side. You'll be able to see it on our website. Um, so this is what we started with. We had the slip knot uh, on the far left for right-handed knitters, flip flop for left-handed knit. Then we knit purl five, knit to last five stitches, purl five, repeat last two rows until it measured two inches. Then um, before you start the decreasing, move your stitches inward, make your decrease row, and then make your return row with purl five, repeat it seven more times. I have just done the repeating of the seven more times. Now it says you'll need to decrease to 12 or 13 stitches. That's depending upon if you had, if you started with an even number, an odd number. With a narrow towel, you may have already reached that width, which I have, my towel was 11 inches. If so, skip to row seven, okay, down, way down here, but let's read on. If you have more than 12 uh, or 13 stitches on your loom, continue to row five. Most of your average kitchen towels, unless they're a finger towel like this one, are going to be close to like 13 to 15 inches. So you would move on to here. And so you're gonna knit across again, moving your stitches from left to right, if you started left to right, uh, if you started that way. And then when you go back the other way, then you're going to, uh, on row six, you're going to purl five, slip, slip, knit. See, that's it's reversed because you're just working this way, but it's written from left to right because that's how we read, right? S correct? <laughs> so you're gonna slip, slip, knit, knit across the last dozen, seven stitches, knit two together. You're going in this direction, okay? And then you repeat these two rows until 12 or 13 stitches remaining so that you're just like this. Then you jump down to uh, seven. Okay, this is the handle. And this is where you're just doing a garter stitch all the way um, across. So you're just working back and forth on those 12 or 13 stitches until uh, your handle part measures three and a half inches. So you're just going to see me work across now, uh, knitting to the right, purling to the left, all stitches. And then we're going to um, make our buttonhole row, which is row nine. And then uh, we'll work a couple more. And then we will um, 
uh, bind off and we're going to bind off pearl wise and let me show you the sample of what's going to happen so you're going to be making this okay so we're about to work this part here and then we'll work a buttonhole and then we'll bind it off okay do i need this here to show do i need that sitting there you can't see it anyway never mind okay let's continue I'll do this so you can see this better. That's good. Okay, I'm going to purl all the way across. Is it too much white or do you all want to see the red so that you can see these stitches better? Like flip it to the back. If you want me to flip flip it to the inside, please tell me because I, I can't tell if this is too bright for you. It's different when I'm uh, knitting live. The camera responds differently. You know, I'm going to do that because I can see the color light changing and it's just, it's driving me bonkers. So if it bothers you to have these stitch markers on here, you can take them off. They're not needed anymore. stretch hold on I'm hunched over a table it's, it's not my normal knitting spot so Welcome, Vaughn. Thank you so much. I'm so glad it's improving your knit, your loom knitting skills.
Oh, great idea, Michelle. Your uh, grandkids' teachers will be getting these next Christmas. Awesome. Yeah, um, that actually, there would be a good idea for um, teacher appreciation gifts probably even in the spring. Like if they have a, um, uh, I mean, really, because they could be at any time um, if you wanted to. Like a springy towel because they could have it at home. I mean, you know. They don't have to be a holiday themed towel. They could be for any day. I mean, you could make these any day of the week. So I just happen to be doing a holiday towel at this time. Um, I didn't really feel like cutting up my regular towels. <laughs> and I didn't want to take out an old um, crocheted one that I have because, you know, someone else made that for me. So why would I do that? But, you know, many people who loom knit do not crochet and they're not going to make a crocheted topper. And I like the tradition of them being incorporated into your towel, not just it's a loom knit topper that it just allows you to slide your towel through, you know. So you could make your yarn match it or you could pick an accent. You can even make... Um, could make stripes but I would only change them on the knit row so if you're going to change color make sure you're changing it on a knit row or use like a variegated color changing but if you if you're doing color changing and you're wanting an actual striping then I wouldn't do that because you're going to be decreasing so only do the variegated uh, for color changing and stuff or you know you could combine two colors together Also, don't forget for the um, gifts, uh, you could still knit you some uh, mug hugs. We have some mug hug patterns that we did. Um, the snowflake mug hug, uh, I'll be converting to Lilium, but right now I have the um, zigzag and the peppermint one, and really they don't have to be holiday uh, related at all. It's a jar mug in a... Um, and a mug hug or a cup cozy, you know, for hot drinks. Um, but the jar hug is, you know, um, a jar cozy, um, you know, like where you put sweets or um, a drink mix or something in and give that as a gift. Um, but you could do a, a stripe of other colors. They don't have to be your, um, you know, you can, in fact, you could do multiple colors, um, but they don't have to be Christmassy. I like the zigzag one a lot. That's really, it's my favorite. And then the Santa mug hug we already have for the loom. It's the only thing left I have to do is the snowflake one. Once you have the basics of the snowflake, um, it could be used with other um, patterns because we're using a duplicate stitch on that to make the snowflake. So if you just want it plain, you could keep it plain. Oh, Libby, thank you so much. She says, Kristen, I absolutely love this tutorial. I've always wanted to learn how to loom knit a towel topper. This is a perfect tutorial. Thank you. You're welcome, Libby. Merry Christmas to you all. <laughs> this is my gift to you. Um, I really, I wanted to get it done. I was afraid I wasn't going to get it done and edit it in time. And quite honestly, that's why I'm making this a live video because I wanted to get it to you. And I thought it was small enough that I could do it live and then you guys wouldn't be worried if it was edited or not because you can always fast forward it. You can, um, especially on the YouTube controllers, um, you can use that, um, that speed button and make it go twice as fast. And I'm talking like this and I'm talking blah, 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 like that, you know, or you can slow it way down, which in this one, you don't need to slow it down. Also, if you double tap to the right or the left, it will go uh, forward or back 10 seconds, which is nice. So just so you know, thank you for the link, Joanne, to the different mug hugs that are available for the loom. Really appreciate it. 
Yeah, I meant to get the, the, the snowflake one done before the end of the year, and I still could do that. That's just one of those things that I'm still looking at. Thank you, Libby. Thank you so much. Blessings to you, too, and your family. <clears throat> I'm really excited. My mom's towel is going to be here. I'm going to put this in the bathroom. Um, I've got some um, white linen towels with our monogram on them. And they don't quite cover the towel bar. And then and then I have one that's like that people actually like wipe their hands on, like on the like a round one. And so I think I'm gonna stick this one on the round towel hoop. And that'll match. Normally I keep like a blue towel in that bathroom. This will be fun. Yay! <laughs> My towel toppers don't look like this. I kept them for myself, Vaughn says. <laughs> well, now they can look like this. You can totally make them, Vaughn. We need a towel topper, Tom. Tom, towel topper, Tom. Towel topper song. All right. Anybody want to shoehorn another song? <laughs> it doesn't have to be Christmas. We can make it a about towel toppers. <laughs> What song would we shoehorn to make towel toppers? I gotta make I gotta make three and a half inches, y'all. I got time. All right, just to show you, this is what it looks like. Okay, so we've already decreased, and we've got this really beautiful uh, top of the towel. It's it adds a nice length to it. Okay, so um, I knit to the I knit to the two inches, but because I knit to the two inches, now how see how it like. It, instead of it looking um, straight up and down, it starts angling. So it's a really nice, gentle angle. Isn't that cool? Yay! <laughs> I think it's turning out really lovely. I like the tea towel size. I would say try that one because it, then it doesn't get like monstrous big. And remember, like this is really, um, this plus the length of your bar is really going to be what you length you see it at because we're going to make three and a half inches, but it's going to... Be like this where it then loops over and buttons well on the other side so it's going to be like that long Vaughn says gorgeous Michelle says this is beautiful thank you guys I'm so glad you like it Joanne worked hard on helping me with this. She made the first um, the first pattern that you actually haven't seen yet, but she worked on the um, LoomNet one, the LoomNet version on her Kiss Loom, and she's already made hers. I think she made more than one. What yarn am I using? Valerie, I'm using a cotton yarn. It's um, Burnett um, Han Handicrafter Holidays. Um, this one right here, but it doesn't have to be cotton. You can use a, um, a worsted weight yarn, um, like a, I mean, you could use a super saver or Karen one pound, um, and then, uh, or like the, the, um, one, what's it called from, um, lion bounce, so red heart, super saver, Karen one pound or, um, lion brand. I think it's called one pound yarn or pound, no pound of love. You know, all those are kind of similar-ish. If you hear that squeaking, it's because I have I have my craft table underneath all this, and if I lean on it too much, it squeaks on me. <laughs> I knew that 
was gonna happen. So because I'm using cotton yarn, I will say this, my stitches, the, the thing I do like about the cotton yarn is the stitches are going to draw up a little bit. So like where they're a little, a little bit gappy here, once I wash this, uh, they'll kind of, they'll kind of close up because this was, um, this was a little more gappy when I was working on it and then it closed up. And by the way, this is a seed stitch. So like the other pattern, you'll have this real pretty seed stitch inside rather than this, um, just e-wraps. So that's the seed stitch. It's a really, really nice pattern. Sorry, you're seeing all this. <laughs> you're seeing the frayed red from my towel, <laughs> the where I cut it. Oh, that's what that mess is. So get you some of that um, fabric glue stuff or whatever to fix the edge of that. I don't know why I'm not doing the quick, um, the quick version. Why am I not doing that? I need to do the quick garter stitch version. If I was sitting here in my movie room, I would totally be doing that. So Yeah, I'm still on, Robin. It's a complete loom along. Live. I can't jump. I don't have step outs next to me, like, to fake it. <laughs> no faking it here. Looks like I'm almost done. Yeah, it's, um, it looks that way. I've got to get three and a half inches total. I, I, I've gotten further. I'm not, I mean, I'm not starting at three and a half right here, but I've got to get three and a half inches. All right. The quick garter knit, uh, garter stitch method is, um, e-wrap the row and then, uh, knit over a few and then go ahead and purl it as you, um, after you knit off the stitches. So you can work that stitch, uh, that row, two rows at the same time, pretty much. The pattern for the yellow and gray towel, Libby is asking for it. That pattern we do not have up yet in a blog, but we will. We have a needle pattern for it. So if you want the needle pattern, uh, I have um, the, uh, it's called at your service. If you type at my service, at your service in my website, uh, go to goodknitkisses.com and uh, search for at your service. Uh, and it has the towel, the, that towel in the needle version. And there is a tutorial how to make that. And it is, um, if you used acrylic um, for the towel topper, it's okay. But if you're making the towel, I would suggest that you make the whole thing out of cotton yarn. Sorry, I'm half reading what you're saying. I keep, while I'm wrapping, I'll, I'll look at you what you said. Um, let me go back. Kristen, what is the pattern to the yellow and gray towel? That's that, your service towel. The loom knit version uh, we have yet to make. We're just going to call it loom knit um, uh, hand towel or something. Uh, if one used acrylic yarn for the towel topper and gave it as a gift, what would the washing instructions be to give recipient? If it's acrylic and it's, um, you know, you want to read the directions of your ball band, this thing, this ball band, whatever the uh, instructions are for cleaning. So um, if it's just a worsted weight yarn, then they can throw that right into the washing dryer, washer and dryer, and uh, no worries. Uh, 
just like they would normally wash their towel. Um, Vaughn says, I can't wait to watch this from the beginning. Awesome, Vaughn. Well, if we will put the replay on. Uh, th this will be available uh, on Facebook immediately after, and then uh, about 20 minutes afterward or so, so um, we'll be putting it up onto, fi onto YouTube as well, so you'll be able to find it in both places. So if you're just joining me, I am completing a knit row and then going back after I knit over a few spots here, then I just um, purl the stitches right underneath it. And it's, so it's like doing that row right after it. It's not doing the row technically at the same time. It's just you've already kind of pre-wrapped um, pre the stitches for the row above or the row before, whatever. And um, if you like, if you like a video that I make, um, make a playlist, you know, Good Knit Kisses videos and save the videos that you like of mine to it. Um, be sure and um, use your Gmail um, or the account that you signed up for um, YouTube on. And um, it's great because you can see your history and you can subscribe to things and get notifications. Be sure and hit that notifications button so that you can... Um, you know, see when I go live on there or when I come out with a new video. You can also see this new community feed uh, and I'll make posts. I, I don't, I won't make um, more than a post a day. Uh, probably won't even make more than one post a week uh, so that you don't get tired of me. <laughs> um, it's not like a regular feed. It's almost like having Good Knit Kisses social media platform, really. It's a really cool feature. So be sure and check out Good Knit Kisses um, YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com slash Kisses. Click on the community tab. Only channels with 10,000 subscribers or more have that feature. So not all channels will have it. So if you don't see it on someone's, it, it just may not have gotten rolled out to them yet. Um, so, oops, I, I knitted that whole row over. I got to talking. I get a coffee break here. I got my Yeti cup. See? <laughs> Oh, it looks like Carol's on. She's saying hi, Joanne, for good night kisses. <laughs> Gayla says, LOL. <laughs> Make a playlist. She says, I already have. I have numerous GKK playlists. <laughs> Thanks, Gail. Uh, please, I encourage you guys uh, to go visit the Good Night Kisses website, goodnightkisses.com. And uh, spend some time on there. Just take um, take five minutes and tour around and look at the articles. Um, click the love button. Um, it tells us if you are enjoying it. Give us some comments on there. If you like them and want to see more stuff like that. We've been adding to it, especially in this past year. Um, gone through lots of changes and try to make it a better place for the community, our community, for you guys, for y'all, as we would say here. Hey, Vaughn. Oh, you said love my channel. I refer to it often. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. There are lots of channels that I enjoy and, um, it's just so, it's so awesome. I love, <laughs> I love YouTube. I love um, that it brings us together from everywhere. It's so cool. It's so cool to connect with people in um, the knitting community, um, especially in loom knitting. I felt so alone. I remember the first time I called a local yarn shop and um, I actually went out of business a few years later, believe it or not. Um, within a year or two, maybe. <laughs> and so I, but I called up there and, um, they're like, well, what are you doing knit or crochet? And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm knitting on a, on a loom. And she's like, I can't help you. And I'm like, but don't you sell yarn? And she's like, yeah. 
Um, <laughs> it was very lonely. I'm like, I'd like to see if I can get instructions. And they're like, well, you can only do a few things. So, I mean, they're just really ragged on it. And I was like, okay. And I never went into the store. I really wanted to go. And they were open limited hours. And anyway, there's a lot more local yarn stores that have, like, um, in the last few years that have really embraced more people, um, embraced crocheters more than they used to, um, which is awesome and encouraging. And I want loom knitting to be that part too. So, um, my hat's off to you all. Knit in public as much as you can. Vaughn, um, uh, let me know. You can reply back to that comment later or write it down there. Um, but tell me what you're specifically looking for on that. And, uh, and I'll see. If there is a project on a knitting board that you would like me to do, um, let me know. And um, especially if you'd like me to do it personally, um, write it on there and I can talk to the knitting board people about it or they can see it and ask me to do it. Um, just let me know because I've done some things for them and they might let me just do something that you've already seen on there. That's actually easier for me because then I'm not writing a pattern. But if you want to see me write patterns on it, then please tell me what, if there's a specific type of project you'd like to work on. All right. Doing pretty good, y'all. Um, I'm at... Uh, I'm, okay, I'm getting pretty good. I need a few more rows here. Yes, Vaughn, I agree. People need to educate uh, loom knitting. Uh, it's been around just as long as needles. In fact, um, it's been around longer. I, I From what I understand, needles were invented by fishermen so they could take... Uh, take their stuff and make it portable because the looms, you know, especially back then, like really big looms weren't um, as portable because um, they were they were big. And um, I mean, quite frankly, they weren't even as portable as this. Um, and so they made the the needles. Excuse me, I'm yawning. Oh my gosh, it's been two hours. Anyway, so they took them on their boats, you know, to make socks and all that stuff. Stuck. Mary, you stuck or is the video stuck? could be a buffering issue or are you stuck at what part you're on on the pattern let me know there's a bit of delay on the comments usually I see you guys your comments much faster but for some reason today it's a little delayed so hopefully this video is getting recorded well All right, bye, Carol. Thanks for hopping on. Tell Jack hi. Hey, Joanne. <laughs> Are you back? I saw you jump. Uh, I guess you're jumping on from probably leaving. It's probably supper time. Not quite dinner time here in Texas. Oops. Oh, didn't mean to hit the camera, y'all. I'm nearly there. Got a few more rows and I should be ready for a buttonhole.
there's this thing called a Twitch stream. And um, I haven't I haven't looked into it, but I understand some people use Twitch streams so you can see what they're doing during the day, like like making something, like sewing or throwing pottery or something. I'm like I'm not sure I want to do that for my knitting. Yeah, I understand that comment. I watch more YouTube than TV. Yep. Been there, done that. Joanne, woohoo! I'm back and all my projects are done. All the ends are woven in and the buttons are sewn on. How many, are those towel toppers you made or are they, what, are they all the same thing or what? Um, that's awesome. Oh gosh. So was that 15 projects, I want to say? So you had done five done earlier, and now you have 10 more. Or you had 10 more to do. I'm going to knit over this uh, row and count, uh, or not count, I'm going to measure and see um, where we are in the pattern. All right, push it all the way down. We'll flip it over, okay. So this is where I wanna measure from. We wanna be at three and a half. And oh my gosh, that could not be more perfect. So we're right, right here and we've got the three and a half and we're just gonna I'm not stretching this. I'm just moving this down. And the and the, seriously, the zero is like right at the right spot. So this is ready, I believe. Let me get my pattern out. Hold on. Two towels, limited version of towel, a knit towel I showed, plus other projects, 11 total. That's amazing. So good. So good. Do you feel accomplished? Okay. Now we want to, I'm, I'm on to the pattern here. Okay. So we have worked um, the handle. We've done row seven and eight, alternating in garter stitch, uh, repeating the last two rows until the handle measures three and a half inches. And now we're on to row nine. This is the buttonhole row. We're going to uh, knit five. In fact, I've got to purl back to that. Okay, so I gotta do one more row. <laughs> and then we'll do the buttonhole row and I'll refer to this off camera. Just a few more rows and we're done. Gonna get some coffee. Hold on. All right, we're coming to the end of our row. Ready to move on to row nine. I've got my three and a half inches knit. Let's start the buttonhole row. You're going to knit five. So if you still have your stitch markers on there, you're just gonna to knit to that stitch marker. Then we're going to knit two together. So we're gonna pick that one next to the stitch marker up and move it to the right, right here, yes. And then we're going to um, yarn over. Um, so we're actually not gonna be walking stitches over. Um, so I'm gonna work these stitches and then I'm going to, I've already moved this over to do the knit two together. I'm gonna pick it up and move it and then we'll do the yarn over. So here we go. 
going to e-wrap one, two, three, four, five, and knit these stitches. Then we're going to knit these two stitches together right here. So it says, my pattern says, knit two together, yarn over. So that means the knit two together needs to come before the yarn over. So there's that yarn over. Just I'm just wrapping the peg. Or I can go in front. Um, Joanne is on here watching so she can tell me if I should just go in front. But I think I'm just going to e-wrap. So we're going to e-wrap uh, as a yarn over. And then now uh, I'm going to um, knit six. So I'm knitting to the end. So I can just e-wrap the remaining pegs. Okay, and that was row nine. Row 10 is purl all. Have a safe flight, Vaughn. That sounds really, it's cold. It's 18 degrees in Maine. Oh, man. That, it never gets that, that cold down here. It, rare. Absolutely rare. Okay, we finished working our pearl row. And that is row 10. We're going to make, uh, we're going to do row 11, which is knit all. The purl stitch, um, it purled that buttonhole that we made. And so now there is a hole in our work that the button will fit through. So you need a button that will be wider than that hole so that it stays closed. Okay, and then we're gonna repeat rows 10 and 11. So we're gonna purl another row and knit another row. And these are the last two rows of our pattern. Oh, you have to take off. Oh, <laughs> I was reading it. You had to take a flight or something. I don't know. <laughs> LOL. I wish I was going somewhere. Just wishful thinking. Oh, sorry. Trying to knit and do this at the same time. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to knit this last row. And then we're going to bind off. Okay. All 
right, so we are on the last um, part and we want to bind off. Now, here's a nice little trick. The um, the pearl knit, uh, binding pearl wise, um, when we knit and we use pearl stitches instead of knit stitches, it, the edge that it makes will roll to the back. And so um, it's a nice um, finishing trick if you wanna keep this in your back pocket. Um, and so we're just going to, um, instead of knitting the first two stitches, we're going to purl this first two stitches. So to begin a purl bind off, purl the first two stitches. The only difference uh, than a basic bind off is that everything is purled. So we're gonna take the second stitch and move it to the first. And you can uh, lift the bottom loop over the top. It, you don't have to purl that. And then we're moving the first stitch over and now we're going to uh, start our repeat where we just purl the second stitch, lift it up and move it onto the first one and knit off and then move it over. Purl the next stitch. And move it and knit it off. Oops. Purl the next stitch. And knit off. Purl. And knit off. Pause. I'm going to plug in my phone. Okay. Battery. Hang on. This yarn is giving me issues. <laughs> it's like it, this particular one has this metallic thread in here and oh, it was bunching up on me. Bobby says, your binding technique is better than the ones I've seen on other patterns. We'll have to give this a try. Thank you. Mine never looks right. Uh, I must be missing a step. Um, yeah, and it depends, Bobby, um, if you're, like, what the stitch is before it. I mean, if you if you want that knit stitch there, then you can. Um, I happen to be on what would naturally be a purl row, so it would be kind of weird for me to do another knit row after I just um, did a knit row. So that's another reason for that. Um, it depends on the pattern, and also be sure that you're um, being loose with it and not um, over tight. Okay, and then now... Um, and I get, like you can look at your um, your work and see if you need to add an extra um, loop and knit it over. Um, it, it's it's um, it, I don't think I need to add an extra stitch or anything. So I'm just gonna pull through until I get a nice big loop, and then I'm gonna cut it off and just pull that on through, and then tighten my stitch up and then you're going to need your tapestry needle for weaving in the ends 
and I can show you, hold on. I'm sorry, I thought I had a tapestry needle like super handy, but let me get a colorful one. It was not colorful enough. Okay, so you're gonna wanna weave in your ends and I'll show you the weaving technique that I like to do. Uh, with garter stitch, just going to, let me clean the surface here. I'm gonna go um, in into this stitch down below here. Okay, and then it completes that look on the edge there. And then I'm gonna jump down a couple of rows let me um, back off a little bit. There we go. All right, uh, I'm gonna go down underneath here, a couple of rows, pull through. All right, now you are weaving in the ends, and then you will um, you will end up sewing your button on. Uh, so we're gonna go down uh, down to. Um, uh, this little smile <laughs> here, or this, uh, yeah, this is kind of a frown. It looks like a little umbrella right here. It kind of goes over, and then it goes down through this loop here, and then you could follow it down here, and then it's gonna go around like a little smile. So it's kind of going backwards, and pull through here, there, and then go up, through that and then go back through that stitch we did before so we're going around and then we're going to go up here like that and we're going to go around and down and just follow it you know the uh the old christmas candy old-fashioned candy that looks like this you know or if you're doodling that's what you're doing it's really fun if you um, if you want to think about. I mean, it doesn't sound fun right now, but like if you got a whole bunch of we uh, ends to weave and you want to think about it as candy or something. I don't know, um, but you can really get a lot of these ends woven in this way. This is a really easy way to think about it when you'd want to do garter stitch, you know. And then um, you can go back on itself, and then kind of go through some of these middle stitches here and I like to keep it at the back and then uh, trim off my end and there we go and then you have your buttonhole here and then um, it will um, I'm sorry that's the back so I should have done it to the front but anyway you're gonna go down here and you're gonna put your um, your button in and uh, and your buttonhole there we go is right there and and there it is so you're gonna sew your button in here and then your button hole will go around it so I would put in this button here sew it in and you want to make sure you're using a needle not a tapestry needle but like a sewing needle uh, and you could use thread here and then go in through several stitches here not just not just one uh, stitch and then this will button through do 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 and then you have your towel and then these parts here you're going to flip over and tack it down you can flip it and tack it and sew it and then flip this part down and then sew it and if you have a sewing machine uh, you can stitch across and before you do that though you might want to do like one of those little fray um, little special fray glues or whatever and, and get that tacked down um, if you're a sewer you know how to do all that stuff but um, for people who don't, um, you may have to do like a blind stitch, like where you fold it down again, and then uh, and then you can sew across and get that all woven in. And then this little woven in part here can just tuck into your knitting, so you don't actually have to weave that tail in. And that is it. So that right there, let me fold it and <laughs> let's cheat the camera here. <laughs> So this is your loom knit towel topper with your knitting loom and then um, you can do one with a washcloth and hang it and do the same thing and add it to it so you have your choice of cute loom knit toppers or a loom knit towel to make. 
I hope you enjoyed making this towel topper. Please leave a comment below and uh, be sure and comment on our blog and uh, tell us uh, uh, tell us all about yours and give us a picture. Tag us on uh, social media. And we're also on over on Instagram. So if you haven't uh, followed us on Instagram, be sure and do that. And you can always tag me at Goodnight Kisses and uh, show me what you've been making. I would love to see it. Really, I really would. So on behalf of Goodnight Kisses, uh, myself, Kristen, and Joanne, who help with this pattern, have a great day and happy looming. Bye, everyone. And Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays.